Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is module 11, lesson two, transformations of quadratic functions. After this lesson, you need to be able to apply translations to quadratic functions, apply dilations to quadratic functions, and use transformations to identify quadratic functions from graphs and write equations of quadratic functions. Let's learn translations of quadratic functions. So we've already seen translations, which is just a slide a couple times this year through different units. So this one follows more closely to exponentials than it does, say, for linear functions because of the way things look. So a vertical translation of a quadratic function is written as plus k at the end of the parent function, which for a quadratic is just going to be x squared. For a vertical translation, just like for exponential functions, k follows what it says. So if you see a number that's greater than zero, so positive in a number, that's going to shift your quadratic function that many units up. If you see minus a number, it's going to shift it down. Horizontal translations are shown inside the parentheses near x. And those are the opposite of what they appear, just like in exponentials. So here, if we see minus h, we're thinking minus usually means going to the left. Well, it's the opposite going to the right. If we see this number as plus a number inside the parentheses, then it's going to be the opposite. Instead of it moving in the positive direction, it's going to move left in the negative direction. So with horizontal translations, it's going to move the opposite of what we see. Example one, vertical translations of quadratic functions. Describe the translation in g of x equals x squared minus 4 as it relates to the graph of the parent function. So again, our parent function is x squared. We have that graphed here so we can see what this looks like. In g of x, we can see here at the end, we have our k value. It's not in parentheses. That is telling us it's going to move up or down. So k here is negative 4. So what that means, it's going to be translated down 4. And we would say that x squared minus 4 is the translation of the graph of the parent function 4 units down. So what that would look like. And for all of these, I'm going to particularly focus on the vertex so we can see what's happening. The vertex here is the most obvious place. It was moved down four units. Check your understanding. Describe the transformation shown as it relates to the parent function. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This is shifted eight units down. We can see the minus eight here, down eight. Example two, horizontal translations of quadratic functions. Describe the translation in g of x equals x plus 2 quantity squared as it relates to the graph of the parent function. So here we can see the plus 2 is inside the parentheses, meaning it's the opposite of that. h is negative 2. And since it's the opposite of what we see, we're actually going to move it two units to the left. So x plus 2 quantity squared is the translation two units left. What that looks like on our graph, again, looking at our vertex, originally it was at 0, 0. Now it is at negative 2, 0 two units to the left. Check your understanding. Describe the transformation shown. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This was shifted six units to the right. So we see minus six, thinking maybe we'd go to the left, but we're actually going to the right. Six units. Example three, multiple translations of quadratic functions. Describe the translation g of x equals x minus 3 quantity squared plus 1 as it relates to the parent function. So again, we have our parent function here. This time we can see h is the opposite of that, so positive 3, and k is 1. So opposite of h, but the same k. So what this is going to be is 3 units to the right and 1 unit up. So if we graph it, we went 3 units to the right and 1 unit up. Our vertex was here at 0, 0. Now it is here. This format right here that generally has the h and the k is sometimes referred to as vertex form. And there's going to be sometimes a value out front. Here, there's nothing, so it would have been a 1. That is your a value. If you remember your leading coefficient telling if something opens upward or downward, this format tells you where the vertex should be. It is the opposite of h, same k. So positive 3, positive 1. Notice what our vertex is, positive 3, positive 1. So you can find the vertex in that format the way it's written. If we went back to the previous examples, in the horizontal translation, it was just plus 0 at the end, so the vertex still had a 0. In the vertical translation, the x was at 0, so it didn't move left or right. It still is a 0. Check your understanding. Describe the transformation shown as it relates to the parent function. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This went 3 units left and 5 units down, so if we were graphing Originally, it would be at 0, 0. Now we're at 3 left, 5 down. 
From there, we can plot a couple other points to figure out what this graph would look like. This would be the y-intercept up here. If we multiplied it out and then combined it with a negative 5, we'd end up with 4. Then using our axis of symmetry, we can make a mirror. So reflect it over here. A couple other points would be down here. So our general shape would look like this. Let's learn dilations of quadratic functions. Again, just like exponentials and linear functions, a dilation stretches or compresses either towards or away from either the x-axis or the y-axis. In a vertical dilation, you're going to see a number a out front of the x-squared, whereas in a horizontal, it'll be inside the parentheses with the x. Example 4. Vertical dilations of quadratic functions. Describe the dilation in g of x equals 3x squared as it relates to the parent function. So again, we have our parent function graphed, just regular x squared. Here we can see a number out front. Instead, a is equal to 3. So we're going to multiply by 3 after we plug in and do the exponent for x squared. This is a vertical stretch. So what this would look like, everything would be pulled upward and is 3 times than what it was before. So originally down here, if you look like this point, it's only 1 up. Now it's 3 up. Originally here, we have 4 up. So this point would be 3 times farther. It would be up at like 12. Everything got pulled three times farther than what it was before. Check your understanding. Graph g of x equals one-fourth x squared. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So if we're graphing, this one still has a vertex at 0, 0, since there's no h or k added at the end of the things. Then if we just plug in some numbers, so I want things that are going to be divisible by 4 after I multiply it out. So 2. 2 times 2 would be 4. Then if I do one fourth of that, I'm at one. So if I plug in two, I get one. Then I can reflect that over my axis of symmetry. And another thing that would be divisible by four would be if I did four times four and get 16, divided by four is at one fourth. Reflect it over again. I have a wider quadratic function than the parent function. Example five, horizontal dilations of a quadratic function. Describe the dilation in g of x equals one half x quantity squared as it relates to the parent function. So here our a value is one half. It is multiplied by x before it is raised to the second power. This would be horizontal, and it's going to stretch it, making it a little bit wider. So we can see originally it was narrow. That half made everything go twice as far wide before it went up the same amount. So kind of the opposite of the vertical dilation where it stretched it upward. Check your understanding. Graph g of x equals 2x quantity squared. It may be helpful to make a table of values to help graph this out. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So first our vertex, if we plug in 0, we still get 0. If I plug in 1, so 2 times 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So if I plug in 1, I got times my 2, and then squared, my total is 4. So I'm going to kind of make a double table here. If I plug in 2, times it by 2, I get 4. 4 squared is equal to 16. That's going to be way off the graph, so that wasn't super helpful. If I do 1 half, half times 2 is 1, and then 1 squared is equal to 1. So that's going to be my point that I'm going to put somewhere down here. First, let's reflect over our axis of symmetry to get our other point. Then we can plot our one half over and one up and reflect it across the axis of symmetry for our other one. We can see that this ended up being a horizontal compression. It is skinnier than the parent function. Let's learn reflections of quadratic functions. So there are two types of reflections across the x-axis and across the y-axis. If there is a negative out front in front of the function, it is going to reflect it downward or upward across that x-axis. And if that negative is in, inside the parentheses with the x ahead of time, then it will reflect it across the y-axis. Example six, vertical reflections of quadratic functions. Describe the dilation and reflection here in g of x equals negative two-thirds x squared as it relates to the parent function. We can say it's a dilation because we do have a number there. It is being dilated. So here, a is two-thirds, and then we can see this negative out front, so it's going to reflect downward over the x-axis. So this would be compressed vertically based on the type of number that's there and where it's located, and it's going to be reflected across the x-axis. So what this would look like, it's now shifted downward, that's your reflection, and every point that was there is now slightly less than it was because it compressed by two-thirds. So this point right here, still one over, but is now at two-thirds down. Check your understanding. Graph the function shown. Again, it might be helpful to use a table or to plug in some values to get your coordinates. Pause the video now and complete the check.
Check your answer. So your dots this time would look like this. this is plug in zero, you get zero. If you were to plug in one, you'd get three fifths either way. And it's negative, so we're going to be going downward for it. If you were to plug in two, then we'd have two squared is four. Four times three is 12. 12 fifths is about two and two fifths. So down here. So our final one would end up looking like this. Let's learn transformations of quadratic functions. A quadratic function in the form f of x equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k is written in vertex form. As I said earlier, these values h and k, so opposite of what you see for h, same k, that is your vertex. Those two things together make up your vertex. And then with this, a is going to either stretch it or compress it, so dilating it. If it's negative, then it's going to reflect it across the x-axis. And then h shifts it left and right, k shifts it up and down. So putting it all together, we have our vertex form. Example 9. Apply transformations of quadratic functions. Our real context here is football. Although they may appear flat, properly designed football fields arc to allow water to drain. Fields rise from each sideline to the center of the field, known as the crown, which should be between one and one and a half feet in height. A cross section of a football field that is 160 feet wide has a one and a half foot crown. It can be modeled by g of x equals negative 0 0.000234 times x minus 80 quantity squared plus 1.5, where g of x is the height of the field and x is the distance from the sideline in feet. Describe how g of x is related to the graph of f of x equals x squared. So, First of all, what this graph would look like if you can picture looking sideways, if you could see it. So a football field or a soccer field, it's slightly higher in the middle than it is on the edges. That way the water can drain off to the sides. That's pretty much what it's saying. here. So what transformations can we see? First of all, we see this negative out front. So that is a reflection across the x-axis. Then we have this value. It is out front. So it's going to be a vertical, either compression or stretch. It is between 0 and 1, so this would be compressed vertically. As you can see in the picture, it's a lot flatter than it normally would be. The h value here, we see minus 80, so we're thinking left, but it's actually to the right, 80 units. And plus 1.5, same k, 1.5 units up. So if we were to graph this, we would have to do all of these different things to the graph in order to get it correct. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and select any of the transformations that occur as it relates to the parent function. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So we should have said it was a vertical compression. You can find that right here. It is between zero and one, and it's outside the parentheses. It was translated up 118 at the end there, that plus 118, reflected across the x-axis, the negative is out front, and translated right 251.5, that minus, we think left, it should have been right. 